All right. It is time for a podcast. We just realized that uh, this is the first episode since March where it's just been the two of us. Yeah, since before PAX. Yeah. So expect the quality to drop tonight, everybody. Yeah, there is nobody <laughs> to carry us tonight, so... I know. I expect significantly more Tide Pod references than usual. Oh, yeah, we're going full full on all of our usual topics. Yeah. There's I no... know, I... Go ahead. I was going to say there's nobody to stop us now. I know. I really want to get the uh, the Hiking Emirate guys on. I know they want to do it. They just live on like the the other whole side of the world or something. Yeah, I know. It's the same problem I have with like, you know, we've we've never had Link on, but right. You know, uh, Pi as well, right? Pi by Pi. Yeah. But being in Australia, their timing is kind of rough. Um, right. Yeah, there's a lot of people still. Uh, I don't know what Matt's schedule is like, but Matt yep. Oblivion is another great one. That'd be cool too. That has not yet been on. Absolutely. You know what we could do? We could like do a contest and have a guest. Uh, have I have a, a viewer as a guest? Usually, hear me out. Yeah. Usually, with a contest, it's something people actually want to win. Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Tunis, good to see you, man. I, I still, Ty, Tywin Niss. I still don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry. Did you just call him Tuna? I said Tunis. Oh, I thought you said Tuna. Tunis, yes. Because he, he seems like he might be an evil Tuna. Evil Tuna is the greatest poster on Reddit. It's, it's pretty up there. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, rest in peace, C-Spence. He was the greatest poster on Reddit. Made an appearance at PAX. Yeah, though I don't remember him looking that way. Men can a man can change. <laughs> I gotta get in the zone. Let me chug this coffee. <laughs> oh, no, it's I been a busy coffee. week. It's been a We've crazy had a... busy week. Yeah, I was speaking about legends, but I know you got a lot going on personally too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, with Legends, Le with Legends, we had, you know, with the patch last week, CBH came out and talked about the balance patch. The patch introduced some bugs, mm -hmm. and then they fixed the bugs today. Is that yes, right? Yes, today they were fixed. So Crusader's Assault is now working as intended. Nice. Not every bug is fixed, mind you. There are a couple other rather interesting ones floating around. Like what? Um. So like minor PSA. Mechanar, if used uh, to create an abomination that contains an elusive schemer. And then, I forget what the second part of the trigger is. I think that if then the elusive schemer trades with something else and dies, for some reason that ends with uh, both players' avatars exploding and the game ending. Like, I guess, <laughs> I guess the last gasp part of the abomination where it shuffles the zero cost version in like yeah. i don't i don't think that the game can handle it because it's not putting a normal schemer in it's trying to put like a zero cost abomination version in and it like flips out i guess that is awesome that um, is awesome. like really like weird scenario but i guess it's worth knowing just because it uh you know may influence people's decisions if you don't want the game to end in uh, like, I don't even know if it ends as a draw or, like, both players lose or however that works. But basically, like, if you use Mechanar, I, I wouldn't recommend making an elusive schemer because it breaks things. I'd like to try to recreate that one. Um, I went on a bit of a journey the last couple days. I talked about it on Twitter. I talked to you and CVH about my plans for doing this. Because um, CVH rightfully pointed out that I talk a lot of shit about aggro decks. And, and and let me be clear, when I say aggro decks, I mean anything that tries to win before, like, turn turn 12. <laughs> like, I, I've said before many times, like, the games that I'm playing, that, I'm, that I want to play with Legends, are games that, like, my opponent concedes, or they let me get to turn 20 and do this stupid thing that I was trying to do. Um, so, I challenged myself to play nothing but aggressive decks 
and I've been recording my experiences. So far, I've I've learned to play uh, mid-range aggro, whatever sorcerer. I've learned to play mid-range aggro warrior, and my most recent deck is Halalu. The Halalu draw all the cards in your deck, haunted manor thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've had quite the experience. I've had quite the experience. As a guy who loves aggro, like, how does it sound to you to hear a guy who's been playing this game for for two years now <laughs> <laughs> tell you that he's learning how to play aggro? <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy for you as a person. You know, you're putting yeah. your prejudice aside. You are, yeah, trying new things, exploring. Um, I mean, I, I, I make, I make no uh, effort to hide it. I enjoy aggressive decks specifically yeah. ones with a lot of charge but just like, aggressive decks in general i enjoy mid-range i actually think mid-range might be uh my favorite archetype to play just because yeah. it's i don't know there's something satisfying at least to me as a player and recognizing you know when i'm the beat down when i'm not um you know right slowly but surely you know wrestling control of the board away from somebody and then using that to snowball like i really like mid-range sorcerer especially uh post clockwork city and things like that where we got extra tools like barrow stalker post forgotten yeah. hero where we got like bleak coast that you know i mean it's a five five for four but you you get that little incentive for trading with the sleigh and so forth and things like that and i just I think yeah. I enjoy the most playing mid-range decks that are like board centric and then generate value that way. But I do love me some aggro. There are there is something satisfying about, you know, yeah, un just unloading on somebody for like fifteen damage in a turn and then drawing a bunch of cards with Elfric's House Carl. That's fair. That is fair. I will say this is the first time I've ever played Bleak Coast Troll. That was yesterday. First time yeah. I've ever played that card. Yeah. Uh, you're right. It is very satisfying. I, I think about all the times that I'm trying to like, like grab any value I can out of uh, whatever garbage minion has captured my attention for a couple weeks, uh, and then I compare that to the sensation I get when I, I it's turn three and I have the ring and I play Bleak Coast Troll, and I just like win the game. And uh, the, the feeling's not really comparable. It's uh, quite a different experience. So, <laughs> so what have you what what have you uh, what have you learned okay. in your journey then? That, that's a fair question. So uh, the first one I played was the sorcerer deck. I got the list from Burn the Sky. He's running a really purple heavy list that uh, features Stalwart Ally, a card that I was playing about two years ago. <laughs> it's like the last time I played it, except in mono purple. And um, when I look like my biases in the, in these first games were working against me because I was not playing for the board. I was going to face. And, uh, when he was watching back some of my games, he was telling me, um, Justin, you, on turn four, you shut off and priest to remove guard from a high defender. And then you went face. You could have just cleared his lane. I was like, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not like, with sorcerer. Anyway, I was like, as far as I could tell, like, uh, Sor, uh, I'm not Sor, um, Shadowfin Priest is just a 4-4 that casts Intimidate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, the, I lost a couple games. I mean, I won, you know, I think I won five and I lost two. And I lost those two. Th those, well, one of the games I got lightning bolted in the face off of a Prophecy when I was a four. And I had lethal. But the other one I lost because I wasn't playing for the board like I should have been. And, uh... I, I, I took those lessons and uh, I appreciated that experience f for that. Um, that. That Sorcerer has, especially with the wards and the, you know, stuff like the Bleak Coast Troll, um, you have the ability to play for the board really, really well against uh, decks that are trying to roadblock you. And I, I felt like it, my, my, my intuition was that, like, I should just push damage with these massive creatures. And I didn't appreciate how gaining control of the board was going to win me the game in the long run because mass removal is kind of garbage in this game. I was I was looking at it like the guy who's always playing the control deck, and who thought like, who was always feeling like, oh, I want him to trade into my minions so that I don't take face damage. Right. You know. Yeah. So. But I wasn't looking at it like, situationally. I was just applying these blanket ideas to it. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, 
It's probably a safe bet to say that I've played mid-range sorcerer more than any other archetype in the game throughout the history, like mm. of me as a player. Um, something about yeah. that playstyle speaks to me. And yeah. Assassin's probably second, because yeah. both of those decks are tempo-oriented decks right. that you use value generating cards to control the pace of the game and control the board and then push your advantage but they do it in such different right. ways and that's why i think i enjoy them but differently right so yeah. the assassin decks that i typically play uh, a lot of people will call it mid-range i prefer to call it more tempo than straight mid-range because yeah. it is usually like what I would call the ampersand deck, right? Like it's a creature and so you're mm -hmm. playing something and trying to get some sort of like additional effect that generates tempo. So leaf lurker, sheer point dragon, these are cards that are going to pull an opposing threat off the board and then put a body on the board for me. And even though my bodies might not be the biggest, right? Like right. let's be honest, a four, three body for five isn't the biggest body for five in the world. But the yeah. fact that it removed a threat meant that I was controlling the board and pressing my advantage as the assassin player. Right. Sor Sorcerer is still like a tempo-oriented deck, but it's more traditional mid-range because it gains its tempo through sheer creature value. And that's why right. playing the board is so important because you don't, you don't actualize your value, if you will, if you're right. not pulling threats off. So yeah. um, I think that's a mistake that a lot of sorcerer players make the the same mistake you're describing where right uh you know they go face early and they don't realize that um you know if i if i have a creature and i can trade into yours and mine survives that is the same as if i had like done the leaf lurker thing right like at right. the end of my turn i now have two bodies on the board and you still have none and slowly like that ramps up over time and then you have generated such an advantage where you can start you know, pushing damage and keeping them off the board, and that's exactly. the way you go. So, yeah, uh, you you describe my experience well. Um, the next deck I played was uh, mid aggro warrior, and uh, unlike the sorcerer matchup, the sorcerer <laughs> deck where I I learned some subtleties. You know, like because like I said, I've always come at this primarily as a control or ramp or combo player. And when I say combo, I don't mean like actual functional good combos. I mean like cool interactions I wanted to try. Uh, like Unstoppable Rage on the Night Talon Lord. <laughs> um, I, uh, unlike the Sorcerer deck, where, I, where I, my experience of just like hoping as a control player that my removal matched up with the threats that my opponent was presenting on turn X. Um, with the Warrior deck, uh, I was able to disengage my brain and actually just win all of my games. Um... That said, like having just I, I did this, I did the warrior and the sorcerer deck the same night, and um, having just played those games with sorcerer, like I, I was coming at this with a little more nuanced approach than I was with the sorcerer deck, and there were a couple games where I did play for the board a little bit, but the only, I, I did lose one game, and that was to the warrior mirror, and my opponent had the ring, and it seemed like my it was an impossible task to win that game. Uh, but I, I, I have to say, like that that deck felt like it piloted it itself um what i learned about that deck is that uh, when, uh <laughs> withered hand cultist very very strong <laughs> very very good very very strong um i had garnag in the deck but i never it never mattered um and and i unlike the other lists that i've been playing i made the warrior list myself i just put cards in it that i thought would go in there and then i, I came up like four cards short so i put redder and battle spear in there because I, I thought it was it's a card i like and i was like well if any deck can carry running redder and battle spear it's got to be face warrior and um it never i never played it because it was garbage yeah no that doesn't it doesn't fit in that deck at all right. uh that's a card that i think has a really high power level that just does no application in constructed unfortunately I think it has application. I just think it's got to be in the more board centric. Like the place that I would see Battle Spear fitting would actually be in uh, one of your more traditional mid Crusader lists that you like. I have right? thought about that. I have. Thought I, about I think that, that it belongs some place like that where yeah. um, you know getting the additional stats, for example, on a Hive Defender matters a lot more. Yeah. But the big thing with the Warrior is like it's only plus one attack. Like. It's yeah. almost objectively worse than a Steel Scimitar right. nine times out of ten in that 
that aggressive right. warrior list so I, I mean if i could run it as the only like if it was a purple card and i could jam it in that spell sword deck i was playing last week like i would do that in a heartbeat it would be it would be amazing in a deck with 25 guards in it <laughs> yeah absolutely uh, but that said the warrior seemed deck honestly seemed to kind of pilot itself um but i i did kind of uh I guess I, if anything, I learned a, a little bit about how few orcs I needed to run to make War Orc Headhunter good. You know, some some niche stuff, niche stuff like that. Um, and then I played today. I played the Halalu deck. I played the version with Conscription, and uh, that I have to admit, I had a lot of fun playing. Um, I I, I love drawing cards. I love having, having a full hand of options, um, and the Halalu deck rewarded me. <laughs> Every every single turn, with more cards. Okay, I mean, like, I, I know, I've said before that I think Haunted Manor would be brokenly strong as a two as a two color card. Um, the, I have the deck just goes off with a Haunted Manor in play. I mean, it's incredibly strong. You draw a ton of cards, and um, yeah, I, I know you have a little bit of a you and I have a. I had some a talk before the show about how we feel about Talisa's conscription actually fitting into that deck. But uh, actually, why don't you why don't you maybe say something about that? Oh, so before the podcast went live, uh, Justin and I were talking, and I actually mentioned that I feel like the aggressive Halalu decks because there are different versions of Halalu that use Manor floating around. There are more controlling ones. There are things like that. But I think that the one that is aggressive, I actually don't think conscription belongs in it i think it's fine if you're just learning the deck because it serves as a panic button like okay i didn't get the job done maybe i made some play mistakes earlier in the game and then the minute that like it looks like all hope is lost maybe you blow uh you know a tellius conscription and you hit some charge guys or whatever um but in a like refined list for you know especially the aggressive one Like, ultimately, I don't think Conscription makes it because you should be closing out your games long before then, especially with the card draw that Halalu has. Like, you're going to fly through uh, your deck. And to be honest, even by the time you get to 11 Magicka, if the game is still going, if you're playing it correctly and you've drawn all the cards you've been drawing, there's a strong chance that, like, I don't want to play Conscription because it's just not good enough. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I have to agree. I mean, I think what I said to you before the show was that um, th- there were two games where I cast Conscription. I think I played ten games with the Halalu's Conscription deck. Uh, the two games I played Conscription, it won me the game. But those were games where if I had a better grasp of what I was doing... Because I-, I think that this deck has an incredibly high skill cap. Um, if I played those games optimally, they it, having Conscription wouldn't have been great. And in a lot of the other games where I was like kicking ass, um, making the right plays or, or good enough plays... Uh, sometimes conscription would sit in my hand and I'd really wish it was something else. Really wish it was something else. I lost one game. I played 10, like I said, and I lost that game to a swift strike monk um, who really just honestly stomped my face. And I don't know what happened to be honest. I'll have to watch the video to understand what happened to me, but um, the game. Yeah. Like, so like I said, I think that the, as the deck becomes more refined, I think the optimal Halalu list running Haunted Manor and all these plot cards and everything. I, I don't think it runs Talia's Conscription. But it was a nice it was a nice catch-all for games where I'd fucked up somewhere earlier. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, Shinar is a great point. Like, it costs 11. Like, the next highest costing card in the deck was three copies of Triumph at Jarl. I was going to say, it's got to be Jarl. That's probably your only six yeah. drop. And then after that, it's five or less, right? So Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, but yeah, I, I, I honestly had a great time playing it. It's it's one of the most aggressive decks I've ever played that I really enjoyed playing. Uh, it, there are a lot, like, tons of different lines because you have so many cards in your hand. And uh, those one, you know, that one point of damage there matters, and that that one trade or not trade there matters. And because you're generating such an incredible amount of card advantage, if you're if you're hitting all the right beats, um, you're able to play a really board centric game if you need to. And some games you can win on like turn five because like, you know, things worked out and your opponent didn't have the right answers. So it, it was very flexible and it was a lot of fun to play. Yeah, like I had a game the other night on stream where. 
the uh, the person had like all of the beats hit right, like kind of right. like what you're talking about. Yeah. And I still ended up winning the game because I I top deck Ice Storm like the exact turn I needed it. But legitimately right. on like turn five, like you're describing, they yeah. had played, uh, like they had led off with like Ring and a Skulk, which found a Firebrand. And right. then they played Firebrand the next turn, and then ring into Halalu Oathman that went into yeah. Halalu Oathman that went into yeah. Halalu Oathman, and then suddenly they just they just had a full board, right? Like yeah. you get three free two twos and something yeah. else. It, like it was insane yeah. the the ability for that deck to just like, oops, right. I have a full board and still have all the cards is right. hilarious. What's kind of remarkable about that deck too is like. There would be times when I would look at my starting handful of cheap cards and I'd say, you know what, like, this happened more often with the ring, but I, I'd be like, you know what, man, like, given what my hand is, it makes sense for me to not play anything until turn two or turn three, even though I could just start vomiting my hand on the board. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to wait a couple turns and then just go nuts, like drop more stuff on the board than I've ever seen a deck do before. Yeah, you can really catch people off guard doing it that way. And sometimes... Um, I mean, it depends on the circumstance, right? But like sometimes yeah. there is some uh, other additional benefits, like um, yeah. maybe your creature quality, like you could vomit your hand, right? But maybe your creature right. quality isn't that great, so you're just waiting till post manor because there's a exactly. big, big difference, for example, yeah. between just like a turn one, you know, naked Nord Firebrand versus yeah. a post manor Nord Firebrand. Like it's a huge difference. I, so. I totally agree. I mean, I, I have to say, like. I think the deck's really, really strong, and I was not playing an optimized version of it, um, just because, like I said, and like you, like we, we've, we've been saying, I don't think Talisa's conscription, conscription goes in uh, in the final version of this deck. I could be wrong about that, but it feels like it's unnecessary. That said, like if if it's an archetype you're trying to get into, and trying to figure out, and you want to take it on the ladder, but you're inexperienced with it, I do recommend honestly running a version with conscription because it kind of will. Uh, it's like training wheels. <laughs> And I will say too, like against like there are some hypothetical matchups where like I can imagine opponents who just hit all their mass removal over and over and over again. You know, I'm thinking of like a Telvani deck that has access to Ice Storm and Drain Vitality, where Conscription might be your only out. I can imagine that world. When so I know you said that you were recording. When is your video going to be out? The Halalu video will be coming out tomorrow night. Tomorrow, because yeah. I'm uh, I'm curious what your list was that you were running. Just yeah, I'll uh, I'll send it to you. I, I stole it off Legend Stacks. Um, yeah, the Warrior deck I made myself. Burn the Sky made uh, my Sorcerer list, and I I just pulled a Halalu list off of Legend Stacks. I would make some changes to it. I think that like I would feel more comfortable dropping down the Talisa's Conscription number to two. Um, oh man, you were running three. I was. Look, wow. Like, I, I, you know, I, I just honestly, I just completely flat out stole the list. I gave credit in the first video, but I can't remember the dude's name now. Um, I feel like three was excessive, even for a guy who like got some value from it. Um, but yeah, I it was an absolute blast to play. I didn't get to live the dream of uh, triggering my. Castellan into giving me a Dagother, although I did do that on the test servers. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a deck that I, I plan on playing more. And to segue into another topic of ours, I think it's probably a deck we should expect to see quite a bit of in the Gauntlet tomorrow. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's fair. I would expect to see see that in is it is it a gauntlet is it the grand melee i always forget what the naming conventions are but yeah it's the grand melee and zombie hunter 9 by 19 yeah i thought that was funny too he sent me a message afterwards actually um i love that name i played against a guy charmer the other day whose name was their email address like obviously while registering their account you know what i'm saying oh <laughs> it was like something something at gmail.com <laughs> i wonder how many emails they get like, I wonder if they did that on purpose as a social experiment. I don't know. About 3,500 people now have his email address, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so we get a melee with some sweet yeah. alternate art. New card, right? 
Oracle Gatekeeper. Oracle Gatekeeper. Now, yeah. I was thinking about that card because there was a time, if yes. you're if you're new to the Legends community and you didn't play during uh, open beta or closed beta, uh, there was a time when that card was, I'm not going to say unplayable, I played it a little bit in Arena, but it was not in any constructed decks at all. No. Like, it was seeing... Uh, essentially zero constructed play so it's it's interesting how far that card came from yeah. one minor buff that it got um just because like now not only are we getting alternate art versions of it but like we're excited and i've been playing it a right. ton so if you're not familiar the card used to not have the word prophecy on it that's right <clears throat> And then it got Prophecy added right around the same time Madhouse came out because they were trying to push the Orc Arc type a bit more. Because right. it was in right. short succession that that got Prophecy. May have even been the same patch, I don't remember. But I remember that got Prophecy and then we got yeah. Stone Shard Orc. Yes. So. That's when I fell in love with Orcs after hating them in closed beta. <laughs> yeah, well everyone hated them in closed beta. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love the alternate art Morkel Gatekeeper. I think it's cool. Um... No pun intended, actually, although it's the kind of thing I would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it looks really great. Uh, I, I like how they're, they're continuing the tradition of giving us these staple cards, these staple core set cards with alternate art. And, although it is funny, like you mentioned, that for a long time this card saw no play. Yeah. It also makes me wonder what the next ones could potentially be, because so yeah. far, now that this will be the third one, Right, we'll right. have willpower represented with javelin, right? Intelligence represented with lightning bolt, yes. Morkel gatekeeper represented with strength. So we have two attributes left, assuming they right. stay on that pattern. And right. as you said, they are staple cards. And I'm kind of curious yes. what you think the next ones would be. Well, Farion nails it in chat. Uh, I th I think for for agility. It's got to be Fighters Guild Recruit because these these are three like iconic prophecy cards, and I think Fighters Guild Recruit is the iconic prophecy card. Yeah, I mean like I, you, you could make the argument that uh, Moonlight Werebat like there have been, I think Moonlight Werebat's a good card. Um, I think it's probably a little underplayed, but uh, since it got nerfed you know a year ago, it, it hasn't seen nearly as much play. You can make the argument that Moonlight Werebat would be a great one but i think fighter shield recruit has to well be the other thing you have to remember is all of these have been commons so far as well oh i didn't think about that yeah so i think fighters guild recruit is the no-brainer for a couple of reasons one like yeah. you said all three of the other ones are not just staples but they also have prophecy they're yes. all commons and yes. let's be honest here can you imagine any world where agility gets an alternate art card and it's not fighters guild recruit like pete hines is going to be exactly. calling somebody if you guys don't know pete hines's favorite card in the game is fighters guild recruit right uh he would be on the phone chewing somebody out Absolutely. no i mean he's a nice guy i don't think he would actually do that but in my in my mind i just imagine him <laughs> like having a meltdown right. where's my fighters guild recruit exactly yeah, but uh, that does leave the question of, like, where do you go with Endurance, right? Because yeah. it's the color with the weakest prophecies by a significant margin. Um, in fact, I, I, don't, I can't even... Other than Mummify and Lurking Mummy, I can't even... Oh, and I really like Bonewalker, the new, yeah. the new prophecy. These um, have all I, been core set cards as well. Right, right. So this is interesting, because with Endurance, they either break the prophecy chain... Right. Or it's, it's Lurking Mummy. Right? Like, because it's got to be a common as well. Well, is Farin Defender a common? I'm actually having to launch that, that, right that now. That one is a common. It could it could I, be Farin Defender. I remember saying at one point, like, I guess a fair, a fair while ago at this point, but I remember saying at one point that Farin Defender is one of those cards that, like, when it showed up would, like, always hose me. But this was before, God, this was before Sword of Revenge when I said that, so times have changed. Yeah. Well, like the look of a warrior deck has changed significantly. But I'm trying to... I'm looking up prophecies. Yeah, I mean, assuming it sticks to the same themes, it would have to be one of those two. And the only reason that I... Wow. Yeah, there are only three common prophecies in purple in the core set. Far and Defender, Cursed Spectre, and Lurking Mummy. Oh, I would love a spooky ghost. I'm not going to lie. That's a card I think... Yeah, Cursed Spectre's not did, bad. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't get the love that it deserved back when it was just core set. Like, yeah. there were a couple of decks that would run it, but the yeah. card was... 
way overshadowed by Shadowfin Priest at the time, sadly. Yes, yeah. Which is crazy, because back then it's not like we were actually removing supports, except for, what, Dark Rift? <laughs> yeah, basically. But yeah. it was, it was honestly, it was because of the body. Right, like, there's exactly. A big, because... one, one magic or more, but I double the stats. Like, that was huge. Right, exactly. Oh, you know, I, kind of an aside, but that just reminded me of something. I was looking at Cursed Spectre, and it's a spirit. I didn't realize today when I was equipping Dawnbreaker to something... <laughs> That that 5-4 blue creature that shackles itself? <laughs> yeah, that's a spirit. Yeah, yes it is. <laughs> that is I a bet. spirit. Yeah, that's that's my random other thing I learned today while playing House Lalu. <laughs> you, you know what I else is a spirit? What's that? The new wolves from the monthly card. I know. They are good undead doggos. <laughs> Third alternate art for Stone Tooth Scrapper is Ian Bits' suggestion. You know, you laugh at Stone Tooth Scrapper and its alternate art, but when I made my first orc deck post um, Madhouse, which was, by the way, the first time I dressed up in costume on the channel, um, not counting the father despair thing, which is creepy, uh, <laughs> I was the orc deck I was running was running that card. Stone Tooth Scrapper not an unreasonable body i mean it's been totally outclassed by some stuff since then but at the time like as far as four drop creatures go in corset i think it actually its stats are unmatched by anything yeah yeah I mean, it is it was it was a nice yeti for a time it was and that's a really good that's a really good analogy because when hearthstone's corset was out yeti was a card that was played and constructed I, mean, I only bit. know that I only know that because I was watching some old Firebad video <laughs> the other day. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think you'll play aggro tomorrow? Take all the tools that you just learned. Yeah, that's an interesting question, and I've really been thinking about it. I think that like I'm torn. There's this part of me that wants to play Control Monk because I was. And this is all theory crafting. I haven't actually played Control Monk in, in a long time. But I was I was thinking, trying to figure out like what deck has access to tools that could beat uh war what control deck has access to tools that could beat a warrior who lands a um Withered Hand cultist. <laughs> and I thought like between Leaf Lurker, uh you know, Danger Noodle and all those kinds of things, I thought like a, a, a control monk deck that was built for it could do it. Because honestly, I expect a lot of warrior in the gauntlet tomorrow. Um, but I had so much fun with Haslalu that it, it's going to be tough for me not to play that tomorrow, to be totally honest. And also, it would be nice to get my gauntlet run done in like two hours, as opposed to the five hours it took me to get ten wins in the last one with the support mage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that the monk analysis is pretty close, because you have a lot of tools for getting rid of cultists, and then on the other end of the spectrum... Like, Sower of Revenge is clearly a boogeyman and warrior as well, but Control Monk would give you access to things like Cast Into Time. Right. So that uh, you can deal with that. Yeah, Drain Vitality, Leaf Lurker. Drain uh, Vitality? And... You mean that thing hasn't been nerfed yet? It has not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just checking. And you have you also have access to Broom of Profiteer, uh, that monthly reward guard with Drain, and... Uh... Uh, honestly, uh, Moonlight Werebat. You know what All card? I think a reasonable. I don't. I don't think. Like my gut tells me, it's not good enough to play in constructed. But you know what card I ran into in arena? Actually, it was today on lunch that was maybe the most annoying thing I've seen in a long time. I was playing uh, arena. I'm yeah. currently playing through a run where I'm Crusader. Yeah. Why? And my opponent played. Three of the what is it feasting hungers oh, yeah. on me? So not the ravenous like... hunger, the feasting hunger, right? So three three yeah. guard and you gain yeah. a uh, health for each opposing creature. All right. Legitimately gained like thirteen health from those plus yeah. traded. Like it was, yeah. it was significantly more effective than I was expecting it to be. 
Yeah. Um, again, probably at the moment still not quite good enough, but as I think about things, like if Halalu became like super meta or if like tokens yeah. make a big comeback, that that yeah. card is really good against those in my opinion. It's interesting. Yeah. Halalu runs no removal. <laughs> yeah. It run, it runs some silences. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I agree. I, I, that is an interesting... And it's another one of those cards like Red Room Battlesphere that makes me want to play like mid-range life game Crusader again, too. Yeah. Um, Ian Bits mentions Ebonheart Oracle. Uh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> you, don't, you don't like Oracle? I mean, look. I, uh, I retired my Ring of Namira combo deck with 100% win rate. Despite losing the last one, it was... It was actually a mirror match in, against another deck, another Ring of Namira combo. I, I mean, like, inexplicably, like, in, like low ch percentage chance of that happening. It happened to me. And uh, I lost. But Ring of Namira combo won that game, so I'm counting that. Um, I, I just don't think that card is good enough. <laughs> I think that it... I think that it can be good if it's just paired with burst healing and i think that the biggest problem is that right now uh burst healing has been like unfavorable for whatever reason right people aren't running night of the hour anymore you know healing potion was right. two years ago the last time that was like really in the meta um right. things like that but you know if i were inclined to run let's say the hungers you know, being able to pair an Ebonheart with it, if, you know, if my opponent's got, like, six creatures on the board, you know, right. suddenly I drop something with Drain, I drop a guard, and I gain, like, 12 health, that's a that's a pretty big deal against an aggro deck. It, it can be, yeah. But I feel like, you know, it, it's sort of like... So it's interesting. When I started playing Legends, like, I went into it with the idea that because my background was primarily in magic for whatever, you know, which wasn't even that extensive, but, you know, I played magic in prison and like, I I'd played, uh, for like nine months after I got out of prison before I broke my leg the night of my first PTQ, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, that story is actually true. <laughs> I, my injury did get, keep me from going pro, <laughs> but, uh, like a football player, but for card yeah, exactly. games, exactly. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, in magic, you kind of learn that like life gain, like, unless it's like incredibly excessive amounts of life gain is like, you know, irrelevant. It's not, it's not a winning strategy. That's sort of just like something that like was drilled into my head, like reading channel fireball articles when I got out of prison. Um, so I, I approach legends with the same mentality and I've found that like, you're, you are right to an extent, like. Gaining like massive like thirteen life or something like that off of a single play, like that that could that could win you the game in 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 a way, right? But it's still hard for me to shake this idea that like that life gain might be better suited as like removal. No, it's not prison story time, you know. Although I'm sure we'll get to some. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess in my head it's just pseudo removal because yeah, you gain the life, which buys you a turn to find removal, but similarly like when you pass the turn back if they don't have enough for lethal they're gonna have to get rid of the ebon heart at that point some way somehow you know what i mean so yeah um don wheel i played i played magic with physical cards for about nine months when i got out of prison and uh i haven't played since after, since i broke my leg i just couldn't get around for six months and then i just didn't go back but I do play on um, Magic Online. I, I play in uh, whatever the fuck those things Cube are Cube drafts? Cube drafts, yeah. But that's the only Magic I play anymore. I mean, like, I've, I've been in the MTG Arena beta, and I have been for a while now. But, I mean, I mean I'm just going to let you know, like, it, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I played my one game for the week today. <laughs> still not fun and actually it's less fun now than it was last week because now you can spend money <laughs> oh so now you're just running into a bunch of yeah like fledged out stuff yeah right I, I've discovered this thing called Scarab God and all my opponents are playing it so <laughs> shocker yeah 
Yeah, I, I, I'm so glad that I opted to pass on that. Look, I love magic. I really do. I just, I stand by. If I'm going to play it, I want to play it physically. Yeah. So. You know what would be fun if we ever were to get together again to hang out for some reason? We should bring a cube and draft a cube. We could do that. You could just honestly bring a giant stack of commons and play mental magic. That's what I used to do at tournaments in between rounds. I don't think I'm uh, equipped for that game. I know what it is, but <laughs> I don't think I, I got the mental faculties or the like encyclopedic knowledge necessary to do that. <laughs> All right, fair. <laughs> I, I'll bring a cube if we ever hang out again. I, I mean, like I have some cards. You know, it's not going to be a great cube, but I'll make it interesting. Yeah, it would be. See, I think the problem is, like, if we ever hang out again, we're probably going to be, like, busy doing work or stuff, you know? It's possible. <laughs> who the fuck knows, man? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> I noticed you're getting a lot of donations tonight, by the way. Uh, it's it's very appreciated. It's a bit war going on. We have some, yeah. some people dropping the bits trying to get that number one slot. Yeah. good times yeah Ian Bits is killing it killing it <laughs> the show appreciates your donations everybody <laughs> so <laughs> these bits are more money than this show's ever made <laughs> yeah, you're you're not lying <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> what else would you expect to see I know you said that you think you're going to see a lot of warrior I expect um, to see a lot of warrior. I expect to see an, a lot of Halalu, to be totally honest. I expect to see Talvani, uh, both alter and not alter. But I've noticed a huge uptick in the number of people who are playing that deck. Interesting. And I'll be honest, I, I expect to see a lot of aggro battle mage, just because every single gauntlet I run into a lot of aggro battle mage, even though it's not a great choice. Which is so funny, because I don't. Like, I don't know if it's because we play at different times of the day. I don't know, Or, man. I don't know if it's Maricon chuckling, pulling strings behind the scenes, yeah. you know? <laughs> it, it might be at this point. Yeah, and Shunar's got a good point. Ray, I, I expect to see Dagoth, probably Rage Dagoth. Really? Rage Dagoth? I've, I've been seeing a lot more mid lately, because that's yeah, but think about it. Like a resolved rage uh, on a, a drain creature against a Halalu deck is game over. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong, but like, listen, uh, a resolved uh, rage on a Hannah Dagath is game over against most decks. <laughs> yeah, Hannah I mean, Dagath is just that good. I I beat two Dagath decks today with Halalu. Um, I sacrificed a lot of resources to do it to kill it. <laughs> But, I mean, like, I have a lot of resources to spare when I'm playing that deck. Hey, what's up, Bayless? Uh, nope, no guest today. This is yeah. our first episode without a guest in, like, six weeks. Yeah, that's why it's been so uh, subpar. We don't know what to do. To be honest, I actually have thought we've got a pretty great show so far. We've been on point talking about Legends for an hour now. <laughs> yeah, I know. We only had, like, one prison story and one Tide Pod mention. Yeah. We're actually kicking ass. <laughs> trying to and now i just cursed us <laughs> trying to it's all downhill from here yeah <laughs> i mean we're hitting the hour mark so it's probably a good time to uh kick it over for questions hold on only here for the joel says yo that griffin grasp episode was no good but i guess they can't all be zingers i'd rather no guests than that dude i'm sorry you feel that way man we try to bring people in who represent all views. Uh, yeah, I mean, if everybody just agreed with Justin and I, then what fun would we have? That's right. You know, I, I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Like, in some ways, you and I are very, very similar. And in some ways, like, we are total opposites. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah, like, we They're... make for a good, good team because we work together well about the similarities, but we make for interesting conversations because we have such differing opinions. Yeah. Like when I say if everyone agreed with Justin and I, the truth is in our uh in our offline conversations that happen entirely online, but I mean, you know, off the podcast. 
That's true. Uh, Even though I, I have your phone number now. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> it's just mostly us disagreeing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> we just get it all out of the way there. Yeah. But they're good chats. No, yeah, they're great chats. Yeah. But I mean, you know, not to get like too mushy or anything, but that's like that's a sign of like a solid friendship, right? Is like an ex a, a, a frank and honest exchange of ideas where people's opinions are changed if one side presents a persuasive argument. And let's be frank, like, too, it's usually me whose opinion has changed because, like, I, I react very emotionally to things. Like, I am that, that guy, like, who is, I, you know, I act on my gut and I, I act on how I feel about things before I consult data. But I'm also a responsible adult. So, like, when presented with a compelling argument for why my feelings are wrong, I change my opinion. <laughs> yeah, well, and also your feelings aren't necessarily wrong. It's just that sometimes your feelings are not taking into account things and I do the exact same thing there's a lot of a lot of things that I do based on emotion I'm just slowly but surely trying to change myself into being a robot so that uh, eventually when my consciousness is put in a machine I'm accustomed to that lifestyle dude speaking of which have you seen both episodes of Westworld uh, I have yes dude that show is so fucking awesome <laughs> yeah it's solid Oh my god, I can't wait for for Sunday's episode. Now, guys, Griffin Guest was a great guest because he he brought a lot of a lot of different opinions that we wouldn't have had on the show if it was just Charmer and I. Uh, and he's welcome back anytime. And uh, I, I yeah, forgot he's not him, even the I, first person to be like no. contentious. And I, Did you and guys like, see that episode with that Ian Bits guy? Like, holy shit! Talk about yeah. something that was a dumpster fire. I mean, oh hi, Ian Bits. Welcome to the chat. Gyro Captain asked Justin, "What was that Halalo deck you beat me down with earlier today?" <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I am so sorry, man. Uh, well, <laughs> you'll you'll be in a video tomorrow. Let me put it like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I recently discovered the joy of playing House Halalo. Um. My only experience with Halalu as a class before was playing Rage Halalu on the test servers, which did really well there too, and I think it's probably a, a, not an unreasonable de deck. Oh, did we crash in the middle of Ian Bits' episode? Probably. It's been a while. Um, That's funny. It's getting worse, for the record. Like we gotta get we gotta get you a new computer. I uh, I was having an issue the other day where I was trying to do some video editing and it didn't outright blue screen, but then this time, yeah, my video editing software wouldn't even launch because it said that yeah. I was out of memory. But then, like, if I run a mem test or I do anything in like yeah. console management or anything, like, I have physical memory, so that tells me that I've got something going on with uh, either my again, I, my motherboard's going bad, so either my motherboard's not recognizing it. Or I've also got a problem with virtual memory, or both. Most likely yeah. the the both train, but yeah, it's getting worse. It's happening more and more frequently, sadly. I, I recognize all of those words as being English words, but I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> I wanted to give a quick shout out to to uh, Aeolus TV in chat. Uh, she streams on Twitch and uh, is worth is worth a watch if you guys want to follow her. She makes she makes some good content. Also, I want to give a shout out to Brefixed, who says, "Why do they call him Ian Bits if he has so few bits?" While donating bits themselves, which knocked Ian completely off of the leaderboard. So. Oh shit. The competition continues. Free gelato. Oh, free El Gato. Free cats. Now I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. Gelato is great. What is the difference between gelato and ice cream? I'm pausing to make sure that I don't need your answer that with something that's dad jokey but probably inappropriate. Um, <laughs> what's up, Immortal King? Good to see you. The spelling is different according to Major Butt Stretch. Yeah, the spelling, the price. Uh, <laughs> Gelato is Italian in origin. All the sort of cynical answers I expect. Yeah. <laughs> those are all... Those are all better than what I was going to say, so... Fair enough. 
PDMD, by the way, it's good to see you in chat as well. Um, what do I think of alternate? What do we think of alternate art more cool? I think it's great. I mean, I think it's more cool than the original. I totally agree. I, I have to be honest too, like not to get like too like whatever about this, but I like having. Uh, I I like that the alternate art cards we've gotten so far, and a couple of them have been like one of them's a man, one of them's a woman. I think that's cool too. So if you want to play with a card that rep, but you know that you identify with more, you can do that. I think part of the appeal of playing fantasy games is uh, the opportunity to imagine yourself as these fantasy characters, and, and any opportunity to make that more possible for more people, I think, is awesome. That's that's exactly why PDMD loves his orcs so much. That's right. Dude, I was watching. <laughs> I was I was uh, showing my our deputy director at work. I've mentioned before, he knows about the channel and he's a subscribed and he's a fan of all this stuff. He uh he, he's also a 45-year-old incredibly muscular tall guy who did 22 years in prison for murder. <laughs> but anyway, he uh he was watching the at work the other day. He was watching the Manticora Jones murder mystery video that I made. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I heard myself say the line about. Uh, oh, fuck. I can't even remember what it was. Um, oh, my God. I'm totally brain farting. He, I, 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 what line is it? Well, I can't remember. Probably one of those misogynist ones that are so prevalent. Yeah. Well, when you do a set. <laughs> When you're doing satire, it's really easy to go that place. Oh no, I heard myself say the line because, like, other until this point, there are no like like overt legends references or, or things you would just assume are absurdly legends related. But I said um, that uh, I was talking about how this the, the, these hookers had hired me to track down a guy, and he they were like, it was six. <laughs> he had green skin and and <laughs> green skin, six arms, and he liked to hit women, and. Uh, <laughs> and then, I just started cracking up laughing and, and, and when you mentioned that PDMD is an orc and I don't know that's what I was thinking about Jesus that was the worst story I've ever told <laughs> yeah I'm gonna be honest I still I still don't understand where that where that went no, I'm, I'm at like, the end of that journey and I don't like are you are you saying this because you yourself identify as a manticora and this this video made you realize it the way PDMD identifies as an orc. Yeah, let's go with that, man. You, I don't know. Are you, are you saying this because you secretly <laughs> dream about having six arms so that you can have more hands to slap women with? Like, where are you going with this? Definitely none of those things. <laughs> let's get off this subject. <laughs> man, that was an awful story. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> I just started like rambling, and I started. I was so caught up in being amused at myself. <laughs> I lost sight of like any fucking punchline that I was trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. The next, the <laughs> next time somebody asks why we have guests so often, I'm gonna point him to this clip. Yeah, man, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta rein me in. Like free form, man. I am, I'm in bad shape. Whew. It's been a long week. <laughs> yeah. It's like that kid who stumbled about dreams. Yeah, well, look. We can blame some of this on brain damage. Just imagine Justin is a senior in a home. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's going to be a scary sight. The good news is, is that Sandra is uh, a few years younger than me. <laughs> and uh, will be there to take care of me. <laughs> and speaking of that, we're getting married in 15 days. So I have that to look forward to. I'm super excited to be getting married. 15 days, huh? 15 days. It's like right around the corner. It is, man. It is two Saturdays from tomorrow, two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah, and then we're going on our honeymoon. We're going to Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, and you're going to be uh, back just in time for nothing. For work. Yeah, for work. For, for this yeah so I, I guess I, I guess this is a good time to point out that like uh, next week's episode of the podcast will be <laughs> 
Yeah, I see the technical difficulties <laughs> come up. Next week's episode of the podcast will be our last for a couple weeks. Um, so we'll make it a good one. Maybe we can get a, a very special guest. We'll figure something out. Yeah. Last, last because of his honeymoon, guys. Not, not because. No, I'm not quitting this or anything. Yeah. Um. I don't know how to quit you. Oh, thanks. Oh, ooh, hold on. <laughs> I just got my, I just got my Twitch drop. 100 soul gems. Sweet. Um. New shtick, please. Yeah, we do need to do one of those screens. Uh, Euro the Fox wants to know what made us pick Tucson. Um, a year and a half ago when we got engaged, I took her to the Black Hills of South Dakota in the middle of the winter. And ever since then, every one of our trips has been somewhere warm. And so we're just continuing the trend of not going to the mountains of South Dakota when it's cold. And also, we drove through Arizona on our way to San Diego in December and thought it was beautiful. Didn't get to spend any time there. And we... Uh, Wanted to spend more time there. And we also realized we'd never seen one of those, like, standalone cactuses things, you know? And so we rented a house in the middle of the desert, like, allegedly next to a bunch of cactuses. Actually, I've seen pictures. There are cactuses there, so. Uh, yeah, but are just... there cactars? I I don't know, man. What's a cactar? <laughs> are you serious right now? You never played, like, Final Fantasy? I have not ever played Final Fantasy. Any of them? Them? No. Oh, Sander them? No. Sandra has one of them for the PS4, but I don't know how it works. Cactar. Okay, here we go. Final Fantasy Wiki. I guess that looks like about what I would expect it to. <laughs> no. You're getting good times, uh, man. You're getting booze in chat for not knowing what a cactar is. Yeah. I feel like I've, I've explained enough of my life story uh, on this podcast for the last 31 episodes for people to not be shocked that I don't know what a cactar is. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier today, Sodi Mag was trying to explain something about like video editing software to me. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I, I make the thumbnails for the channel in MS Paint. <laughs> yeah. Were, were you like, I don't know, can I make it with ramen? Can I, can I, Ooh, can I buy this oh. from the commissary? Yeah, no, nah, dude, I haven't. I have not eaten ramen since I got out of prison. Well, why would you? Yeah, fuck that. Sanders still eats a lot of ramen. I mean, she never did time though, so I guess. Right. <laughs> she didn't have the experience. <laughs> Good times. What did I think of jailhouse lawyers? Uh, like, is this a joke or actual jailhouse lawyers? Like the guys who thought who spent all day in the uh, <laughs> in the library. <laughs> Like I had a, I had a, when I, for the case that I went to prison on, I had a uh, public defender <laughs> and I think he was pretty good. Actually, I could have done a lot more time considering what happened. Um, as far as the guys who spend all day in prison, in the prison library, like learning how to be, how to advocate for themselves. Um, there were a couple, I know one guy who sued the prison because our prison was full of asbestos and he won that lawsuit. And he got some kind of settlement. He was doing life, so it's just going on his books. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he spent years reading about law to file those motions and stuff, and it worked out for him. But for the most part, uh, the guys who are learning the law and stuff, you know, they're not offering great advice. They're filing motions that don't do anything. And, you know, I'm sure there are people who did – I mean, I know there are people who received awful sentences – you know, excessive sentences or sentences when they were not even guilty, frankly. Um, but your ability to advocate for yourself in prison is almost non-existent. And you are 10 million times more likely to get listened to if you hire a, uh, an attorney. Did he get an injunction to remove that nonsense? Now, as far as I know, the asbestos is still there. I mean, what else are you going to do with it? It yeah. is it is the best dose. I mean, you could do worse dose, but it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the as best of times. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. You know, one of the things I do at work actually is uh, send young men and men, men and women to asbestos abatement certification training, um, which is an EPA. Uh, run program where they learn how to safely remove asbestos it's a pretty high paying job for 
something that requires one week of training. And for people, for, for particularly our clients who may have no job skills, it's a pretty good way to get them enough money to get their own place relatively quickly. Ooh, Aeolus wants to know if you're a dad. Am I a dad? Uh, yes. I, I am most certainly uh, a dad. I know of at least two children. There could be more. Um, certainly a lot of people call me daddy, so... Nice. Yeah. <laughs> good, good times. <laughs> I really do actually get that. Like, that's, that's, that's what I think makes that joke funny. I don't know yeah. where it started. I think Pi started it, actually, but... Yeah. I get a lot of people that call me Charm Daddy now, and it was not something that I like advocated for, but yeah. I don't discourage it, so I guess I guess that's equally on me. I remember the first time somebody on like one of the YouTube comments called me Dad or, or something like that, and I was like, Sandra, what the fuck is this? She's like, oh, that's, that's a millennial thing. I'm like, what? <laughs> like calling, like, I don't know. It was strange. Yeah. We should take some questions from the audience. There hasn't been. Like, I opened that up. Oh, did we? Yeah, like 15 minutes ago. We're we're in the interactive part. It's just... Oh. <laughs> we're, we're just kind of rambling. <laughs> I maintain, though, this is actually our best episode ever. I, I firmly believe that at this point. We'll see if we can totally derail it before it's over. But Our best ever? I don't know if I can go that high. We've had some pretty good ones, but I'm 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 excited about this. He has this. So in, in case it hasn't been like made clear, this is the part of the show where you can ask us about legends, about other games, about anything at all, and we'll answer your questions. <laughs> I'll ask you a question, even though I already know the answer, but I'll publicly ask you. Oh, fuck. Um, when that Phageborn game comes out, even though I fully suspect that it probably won't be like terribly awesome, um, yeah. it supports two v two. Yes. So I want you to be my Huckleberry. Yeah, absolutely. I remember you asked me on Twitter the other day, I'd love to do that, and we will do it. I mean, a card game with 2v2? All right. It'll Even if it's junk, like I'll give it a try. Yeah, man, absolutely. I'm excited to try it. I'm always down to try new games. Um, I finally won my first game of Stellaris not too long ago, after investing about 30 hours into it. Nice. <laughs> Does that mean you can move on to Frostpunk? I want to hear your feedback on that. Yeah, I do need to get that. I, I'm kind of like holding off just because I'm about to leave town for a couple weeks on buying anything. Um, but yeah, I will. Uh, I'll definitely get that when I get back. Why? Great, man. I, I just go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say somebody asked why aren't the two of us casting warp meta? A lot of it for me is uh, scheduling problems. They start. I, if I remember yeah. right, because I've been asked in the past, and I always say I would love to, um, yeah. but usually I if I remember right, they start like an hour, maybe an hour and a half or something like that before I'm like readily available. Like there's a reason I stream so late at night and it's not because I enjoy it. It's because that's like the soonest I am available. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a caster for the Elder Scrolls championship series. Um, and that kind of, a man can only commit so much time. <laughs> yeah. I, I was also invited to do that. Um, but again, like, it's just my schedule kills me. That one being on Sundays is usually when I'm looking at houses and or having open houses uh, as of Speaking late. Speaking of casting, I see Schwitty in chat. Schwitty and I have cast uh, tournament games before together. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, Schwitty's a fantastic caster. Ian Bits did a great job for Warp Meta. I agree. Um, we actually, you know... It has been said recently on Reddit that our game doesn't have enough content creators, and I could go either way on that, but I will say that of the ones that we do have, um, we, ha we have a lot of high-quality ones, in my opinion. So, people with uh, great game knowledge, people with great voices, like, I cringe when I hear my voice back in anything, but we have some people with uh, good radio voices, I think. 
Yeah, I, learning like what my voice sounds like um, has been like a pretty eye-opening experience doing all this like Legends videos and stuff. Uh, I'm really used to it now, so it doesn't catch me off guard. But you know, like there is that moment where you're like, "Oh my god, I don't sound recorded at all like what I sound like in real life." Like my new microphone, this fancy thing that like I can't use for some reason through Discord. Um, it sounds a lot more like I hear myself, but yeah, this headset's a piece of garbage. Ooh, so uh, Gyro Captain yeah. has a great question. How much time do you need to create content? Oh, um, well, I would say that YouTube, about half of the games that I record end up on YouTube. Um, so if I release an average of like half an hour of content a day, you know, some days it's 15 minutes, some days it's an hour. But on average, like half an hour of content on YouTube today means I'm filming for about an hour uh, for every half hour I put out. Um, editing goes pretty quickly because like I, I do the same thing to every video at this point. Um, projects like the, you know, the five minute video, the murder mystery thing, that took about four hours to make. Um, both for traveling and for filming on location and then Sandra edited that but for the day-to-day -day videos like I, I edit those um, then there's also the social media presence like I try to post something encouraging like on Twitter and on Reddit like every day even if it's just congratulations to someone I think it gets the, you know both keeps my name out there and uh, I think improves the overall experience of playing Legends which I think like indirectly helps my channel out um, I reply to personal messages and emails as often as I can. That takes maybe 20, 30 minutes a day. Like I spent a lot of fucking time doing this. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I have similar things, although I think my video making time is longer Yeah. on average. So I just recently started trying to get in the groove of making sure that I'm doing, uh, a video a day for YouTube. So a lot of what I've been posting lately are what I call duck testing, and that's simply I play two games, win or lose, and I put the results up, and those are all the games where I'm like trying a new deck list or just checking something out. Um, and those are, uh, again, you know, if it's like a 20-minute video, it's probably, um, you know, it's like the 20 minutes to record it, and then there's a little bit of editing I do and, and so forth. So those ones are relatively quick, but for... Almost any of the other videos I do, specifically like uh, the deck spotlights, those take a significant amount of time because I'm editing like the cards that appear and disappear and the placement and whatever. Like I'm working on one right now for my Alter Assassin list, um, and that will end up taking me like between four and six hours start to finish to edit because um, I put like the Legend soundtrack behind the, the video, and there's like, all these like little things that probably nobody notices and or cares about but yeah. i notice it and it would annoy the shit out of me so yeah um yeah so my videos uh, unless it's the deck test ones tend to take a little bit more time um i also yeah. try to stay active on social media my reddit posts usually are novels so they take a fair bit to type that just depends on whether i'm on mobile or not and whether or not i have to uh, type and then delete it and then type and delete it and then finally submit the positive sounding one where I didn't chew somebody out because I delete all those. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gyro's follow-up question is uh, do you guys have editing backgrounds? Did, <laughs> do you, did you learn editing at your uh, previous career at the penitentiary? <laughs> Turns out janitors don't have a lot of need for uh, editing techniques or or in for, or uh, <laughs> or insight. No, yeah. look, man. Here's my career path. All right, I I, I, I was a, a soccer ref in high school, and then I worked at Blockbuster, and then I I, I sold drugs, and then I was a janitor, <laughs> and then uh, I was a GED tutor, and then I worked at a homeless shelter, and then now I'm a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no editing background whatsoever i just make this shit up as i go sandra is like you know knows a lot about art and and uh about editing software and stuff and has taught me everything i know and also i asked questions in discord during open beta a lot of people walked me through how to use obs and stuff 
Yeah, I, I'm semi-similar in that I basically had no previous experience. The only experience I had with any sort of editing prior was in creating online courses for one of my like uh, educational jobs that I held before, but almost everything that I've done start to finish for my stream has been me teaching myself how to do it, whether it's video editing, uh, image editing, uh, streaming like with OBS stuff, video recording, the art stuff that I make like with my logo and uh, backdrops and my website and I mean I had previous experience with websites and whatever but never like making my own it's always been like work oriented stuff so yeah it was a lot of bumpy self-teaching. Yeah. And d for some timeline insight here I was working at Blockbuster when they were starting to stock dvds <laughs> like uh, i was uh you know we had a bunch of vhs tapes of blockbuster ian bits wants to know how to break into creating online horses I, I honestly have no idea how to answer that question <laughs> yeah i don't know if, i don't know if that's like an autocorrect mi uh, mistake there yeah but uh yeah i also would like to know how to create online horses and then put horse armor on them all right who sings the best version of who's gonna ride ride your wild horses um i don't know okay <laughs> i i don't i don't think i've ever heard one version Oh man, I, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to quit this podcast. <laughs> Who's gonna ride your own horse? Is a great song, man. I'm I'm not saying it's that. I'm just saying I haven't been exposed to it. Oh, uh, online horses, online courses, online horses. Ah. Uh, I didn't kill Blockbuster, but I did steal a lot of shit from there when I worked there. I understand now, Ian, but so he uh, he heard my online courses as online horses. Gotcha. These are some of the most interesting questions anybody's ever asked our show. Shared a picture in Discord like, oh, wow, this was 11 years ago at university. Guy, guy replied he was three in 2007. Yeah, I had that experience when I talked to people about what they were like when I asked people what they were doing on September 11th. And they're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that always gets me right. Like, yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to like put into words. It really hit me the most. I think when I had children, like when my first child was born and I was yeah. thinking about all of, I, I first thought about like all the things I'd experienced in my life that my kid clearly would just like read about in history books. Right. And then I yeah. tried like, then it hit me kind of twofold because then I was trying to think of like, well, you know, growing up all of the things that like my mom would tell me about and like my grandma would tell me about, right. Like my grandma would tell me a lot of stuff about what it was like, uh, you know, living through world war II, Um, yeah. and like she ran a boarding house and, uh, like using rations to get food and like that. My mom would tell me a lot. Um, she was in high school, like during the Vietnam War, and would tell me about those things. And it, it was just one of those like, there are similar events in my life that I will someday talk to my children about, and right. it like kind of comes full circle when you realize like they will never have known a world that wasn't like you know post September 11th or, right. Um, <clears throat> Like, I know I was young in the 90s, but it seems like the world was a lot simpler in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Like, like, I was bleaching my hair, like, I had baggy jeans, and I listened to grunge, and life was good. <laughs> I mean, that's... I think that's that rose-colored glasses, because when you're young, yeah. you only, your, your sphere of, like, what matters to you is, like, very egocentric, in my opinion, right? Like, I, yeah. I'll have those moments where I'll think, like, man, you know... There are times where, like, I just wish I was a kid again, but then it's like, well, yeah, of course I did, because 
I didn't have any responsibilities and like even going to school required minimal effort like let's be honest when you when you think back about it like actually attending like high school is so minimal effort required like it's yeah. kind of embarrassing and yeah. like you get yeah. summers off and i know like of course I, of course i remember that fondly that's funny I don't know. You know, like today I bought a Counting Crows CD from a CD shop and uh, I felt good about it. <laughs> I uh, I did that today. Yeah. I guess even buying a CD, right? Like I was just that's literally <laughs> I was thinking. I was like, to me, it wasn't that you bought Counting Crows. It's that you said the words CD shop followed by I felt good about it. And I was like, yeah, what? that that didn't even occur to me. Yeah. I, I wanted to pick out some good music for our trip for our honeymoon, you know? But yeah, you're, you have a good point. Hmm. I guess I am just fucking old. I mean, like, we're not <laughs> even that old. We're not even that old, right? But like, we, we are you know, like older than most people who make gaming content. <laughs> yeah. Look, I look good for my age. I Yeah, I, I, I look younger than I am. <laughs> I, I do have a buddy of mine who... He, he kind of laughs because every time he sees me, he says, you're the only person I know who gets better looking the older he gets. But that's because he remembers me from when I was, you know, like 87 pounds heavier and looked pretty haggard as a human being at that point. So, yeah, it's less the getting old and more the like I stopped making bad life choices and got in shape. Right. Um... Zombie under 9 by 19 says, 9-11 got my language arts teacher fired. She ran into the classroom and turned on the TV and she forgot to wipe the blow off her nose. Are you fucking serious? Wow. That's amazing. The morning of September 11th. Actually, I don't, well, yeah. I was getting, that morning I was sitting in the parking lot getting high with my teacher. And I was in high school. And uh, I had him first hour and I went into his classroom and like, we watched it like stoned together in that class, like on the TV. And I remember thinking, it was just like such a fucking, I'll never forget. It, it was just like the weirdest experience. Yeah. Yeah. August, August and everything after is a great album. I remember. So specifically for September 11th, when my third hour rolled around, um, like word had spread and I had third hour with uh, a teacher named Mr. Pulver who he made up like legitimately 50% of my day. I had him for engineering technology. I had him for physics and I had him for like this science independent study thing I had. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in that class, he was basically like, Hey, we're going to go through the class like normal, but I'm going to put the TV on over here with no sound so that people can get updates. You know, yeah. he was, he was pretty cool about it. So during that class was like when the second plane hit. Right. And it was just yeah. like one of those surreal experiences where, you know, you see something live like that and it doesn't even like register right away what you just saw. And yeah. I remember very vividly. So I went from that class to uh, what was like the equivalent of an English class afterwards for my fourth hour. And this was with a teacher named Miss Withy. And she was like every mean old tenured stereotype you could imagine in a one teacher, like had a beehive haircut, um, was like short. Uh, wore glasses, kind of looked like uh, she needed to, you know, exercise uh, the ghosts in Poltergeist. You know what I mean? Like, right. one of those. And I remember very vividly, everybody came pouring into the classroom and said, like, hey, can we turn on the TV? You know, right. a, another plane hit. Like, there was all this buzz. And she said, uh, no, we're not going to put it on. We're not going to talk about it. It doesn't affect you. What? Yeah, that, that that was her words. And then I walked out. I walked out and I went I just went straight to the office because I knew that she was gonna like report me anyway. So I just walked straight <laughs> to the office and sat down and said, I'm not gonna sit through that. If somebody has a problem, uh, we can call my mom. And then my mom ended up calling anyway because like eighty percent of my family's Marines and she was calling like distraught and blah blah blah. But uh Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Like I I literally just walked out. I was just like, Well, I clearly don't need to be here because yeah. I'm not going to learn anything of value because I'm going to be distracted anyway, right? Like when, when you have an event like that, like I remember again talking about things your parents tell you, right? Like I remember my mom telling me like when the Penn challenger, and, 
Like, well, it, like Challenger, right? But like when Kennedy yes. died, like she was like the entire school went home, right? Like Kennedy got shot. They just sent all the kids home because they were basically like, nothing's going to get done for the rest of the day. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's just one of those yeah. interesting experiences that you'll always remember. Did the Challenger explode? Uh, six, I think. Oh shit, we were alive for that. Yeah. <laughs> I can never tell when anything happened. I know I know that it's been in my lifetime, but I also I know that I was uh, yeah. I did not see it live or anything cuz I was too young for that. Right. Huh. In good times. Yeah, I don't recommend you saying the words good times after saying challenger explosion in the future just fyi i, I can appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> just add your friend i feel like saying like yeah challenger explosion good good, good, good times out. like probably not something you should do yeah good looking out buddy oh ifo tech was getting ready to go to bed in korea on 9-11 yeah It was definitely a big one. I mean, we didn't watch, we didn't do anything all day in school. Like, you know, I was living in central time. Like the, f the time between the two planes hitting was when school started. So I watched the second one hit. Yeah. See, it wasn't, that's funny. It wasn't clicking for me because then you were like, yeah, we watched it in first hour. And I was like, dude, that was my third hour. But I, yeah. oh yeah, time zones were still a thing even when I was in high school. <laughs> I know it was. A, I know it was a long time ago. Right, yeah. right. Like I, I, you normally you're the one who forgets about our time zone differences, but this time it's me. Yeah. Heat fire ash was in third grade during nine eleven. What a baby. I was about to say good times, but I remember what you just said. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't help it, man. Yeah. Oh, your dad was deployed the next day, Mortal King. Wow. The Earth isn't flat. Yeah, I hate to bring uh, it to Shinara, but... Charmer got in an argument with a flat earther not too long ago. Yeah, they blocked me on Twitter. It's awesome. Because they, uh, they posted, like, some GIF, and then I posted one back uh, of the Earth shaped like a banana, and apparently... <laughs> Apparently Sick. they didn't like that. I didn't even get to like the normal thing. Whenever I engage flat earthers, I usually like to ask questions like, you know, so so what do satellites do? Right? And they're like, well, they're just above. And I was like, well, okay, but for everybody, like yeah. the, the entire planet, like New Zealand satellites, China satellites, everybody's satellites. Like, there's this yeah. worldwide conspiracy about the flat Earth. Like, what does everybody have to gain? That's usually my. Uh, my argument whenever I engage with anybody who has a lot of conspiracy theories because um, I've got some extended family and uh, <laughs> even some close family uh, that have a lot of conspiracy theories. And I always just it started with my brother. My brother is a, a paranoid schizophrenic, among many other things, and he latches onto a lot of conspiracy theories. And I just try to like logically like ask leading questions to have him walk through it with me. Because I always try to get to the like, okay, I understand that you think like, you know, you know, in the case of flat earth, there's that the earth is flat and that there's this big cover up, but what's the gain, right? Like why go through all of this to cover it up? What's the net gain? Who's benefiting from this and why, and why is it such a big deal? And then that's usually when things start to fall yeah. apart because there is no benefit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not into conspiracy theories. I've been a part of a few criminal conspiracies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not it into them, but I... They don't work They don't work because somebody always talks. That's hey, how I know. Hey, Gyro, Captain, Gyro Captain says I'm a government plant. So, interesting enough, uh, I do work for the government. I've worked for, uh, yes. for many governments, and I've worked with many other branches. I've either worked for or with uh, city-level, state-level, and federal-level governments of different branches. And I can tell you, as somebody who uh, works for and with them on a daily basis, that if there are any government conspiracies, 
I am shocked. I am utterly shocked because the other stereotype is that government is usually uh, inefficient and ineffective and that's been my experience. Like, I, I, let, me, let me put it this way, right? I can sit on a conference call with the IRS, for example, and most of the time I'm not thinking like, oh, these are people capable of some grand level cover up. It's usually like, I don't know how they still have a job. <laughs> like it's so right. bad. Oh, yeah. So I, I may I very well be a government plant, but I'm living a pretty meager life for having access to the Illuminati. I guess. Dude, we picked a poor time to air the, our podcast. Like, I, I didn't realize that the Warp Meta tournament was going on right now. <laughs> yeah. It's a podcast. Yeah. They can consume us later. That's fair. Are you rooting for anybody to uh, get the last spot in this championship series uh, next weekend? To get the last spot? Ooh. I don't feel like I'm allowed to root for anybody <laughs> since I'm casting the tournament. Hmm. I kind of want to see someone come out of left field, though. A new name, you know? Yeah, I I mean, I there are some people that I, I would root for, I guess, just because I know behind the scenes the amount of, like, work and effort that they put into, like, honing their craft. And if, if there's anything, like, that's what I would respect, like... Yeah. I every Almost everybody's, like, very likable, so it's not like a... Yeah, I agree. It's not anything like that at all. It would just be... I know... I know that there are some people that just legitimately put a lot of time and effort into it, and I would like to see that rewarded. I think that's a noble desire. You know what I want to see, man? I want to see out of nowhere Blackfall come in and sweep with a brand new control deck. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a thing. No, it's not. But I'm trying to be as outlandish as possible because well, I don't want to. Facing like, his name is in the tournament. <laughs> like legitimately, though, I'm I'm being serious now. It, will Blackfall even play in tournaments anymore? I don't know. Because if he plays in tournaments, especially high-profile ones, they would have to show his deck lists on screen. And I thought the last update was that he was very anti-sharing his deck lists. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So I, I don't know how that works. You know. Yeah. I'm just looking forward to seeing more innovation. I think the real innovation is is going to come for the championship, right? Which is, I think, on the 20th. But, uh, yeah. Gyrocap wants to know when we're going to have Link on. I would love to have Link on anytime. Yeah, we actually talked about that at the beginning of the cast, that there are a number of people we'd love to get on, but due yeah. to, like, time zone issues, it kind of creates a problem. And Link was one of the ones we mentioned. Like the yeah. the australia new zealand you know uh yeah that hard that like think. ocean thing is really hard to get on the same time zone as us so it's not not that we don't want link on we've had the discussion plenty of times uh yeah it's just a matter of we know we know that that one is a hard one to do and ask of them so we're still right ray ray barker has been on twice but he doesn't sleep yeah <laughs> Uh, I will say too, like I've casted games with Link, and it's it's been a lot of fun. Like I really I really enjoy talking to that guy. So, yeah. Gyro Captain knocking it out of the park with these questions tonight. Yeah, we mentioned Matt Oblivium as well. He's another guy we, we we'd love to have on. When we have our like two weeks of downtime, um, while I'm on my honeymoon, um, we'll come up with a list. We'll send out feelers and try to get get some great guests lined up for uh, for June. So Eli says it's 4 p.m. in New Zealand. Surely Link can be on now. It's like 2 p.m. for him. Um, traditionally, when we're doing this, I think the concern was like work schedules because we know it's like right in the middle of the day. So. Yeah. Like, we didn't want to have to ask anyone to have to take a day off of work or anything weird like that. If right. If that makes sense. I was kidding about 
Ray Ray not sleeping. He just doesn't have a job. Yeah. I was I was trying to uh, avoid just outright saying that, but thanks for circling back. Yeah, I'm glad we had to go ahead and fill that in. Yeah. <laughs> Who's streaming right now? Probably Link. I don't know. I don't have stuff up. Yeah, Link is streaming right now. Oh, of course he is. Well, yeah. That's another reason why we can't do it. I don't know. But again, it's... Oh, and it's Saturday. See, we always screw that up. Yeah, I well, really... I struggle to remember what time the podcast starts because Tom yeah. Carmer's on like 10.30 and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Because <laughs> well, we live the... like a, a thousand miles from each other, right? I mean... Yeah, it's a long ways. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not something that we have not discussed in the past. Yeah. You know who would be a great guest next week, right before the tournament, is J Star. Uh, yeah, I could see that. You know who would also be a really good guest right before the tournament? Who's that? C Spence. <laughs> Hi guys, C Spence here. <laughs> The greatest moment in our podcast history. Right. <laughs> yeah. LMAO does seem like a cool dude. Whenever I face him on the ladder, he's playing something sweet. Except for that time he was playing Nick Sox. Did I play against him playing Nick Sox? No, I just he... know that there was a time when he was playing it a bunch. Last time I played him and he was playing Assassin, he Winters grasped my board like three turns in a row, and I ended up losing. <laughs> Chad is too young to know who is C-Spence. I'd like to hope that C-Spence still plays under a different name and it's like recreated himself. We should talk to Kassadin? Yeah, no. I'm actually banned from his Twitter, from his Twitch chat. Yeah, we we can't talk to Kassadin if we wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, I've been banned from Kassadin's chat. <laughs> yeah, LMAO seems like a sweet dude. He would be a good guest. C. Spence is Evil Tuna Fish. <laughs> evil Tuna Fish is the greatest poster on our Reddit. Lazy Gamer? I have asked Charmer to have just a Lazy Gamer on the podcast. I'm, I'm throwing you under the bus here, bro. <laughs> yeah, but every time you ask, I think you're joking. I'll schedule I, it. I, let's fucking do it. The, the reason that I think that uh, you're joking is because... Uh, with the exception of Frank Lepore, you yeah. you have technically asked all of our guests. Like, we talk about it, and then you do the reaching out. Oh, yeah, that's right. So that's why I always think that you're joking. Uh, that, 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 that is fair. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting. He does know how to play the game. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I'd, I would like to talk to yep. him uh for those of you who don't know he's very active in the artifact community yeah and in every interaction i've ever had with the guy has been really positive i have to say that's something to think about how did i get banned from his chat um what did i do so i was <laughs> i'm a moderator in on the on twitch.tv slash the Elder Scrolls Legends Championship Series. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but I am. And he was saying something in chat about, hey, Justin, I hear you have a problem with me. And I had said something offhand one time about how he was a repeat offender for cheating in tournaments. And um, he, <laughs> he's like, like in the chat during the tournament, he's like, Justin, here you have a problem with me. Here you have a problem with me. He starts saying shit in Russian. And uh, I, I write back to him in Russian, thank you, I appreciate it, or whatever, just kind of being a smartass. And he just keeps talking shit. And so I ha I banned him from the Legends. <laughs> I banned him from the chat. <laughs> and then I went a couple of days later into his chat while he was streaming and said something. And I just, nothing, like something innocent. And I instantly got banned. Also, we make fun of Russia in almost every episode of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that probably has something to do with that. Yeah. So, two questions. Uh, both, I think, are good. The first one is, 
when will we have Sander as a guest? And I think that's a legitimate question because I almost think it would be fun to have uh, both our wives, because by by that point, it will it will be a wife. Uh, yeah. Both our wives on and talk about what it's like dealing with us and uh, our content creation, like from the yeah. other side. I think that that could actually be an interesting topic. That's a gr- that is a great idea. That is a great idea. I think she's sleeping right now, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know yeah. my wife is sleeping right now, unless one of the kids is up or something. But yeah. I think. Yeah, that no, that's a good idea. Yeah, because I mean, I think that a lot of people forget that content creation and stuff like this affects other people. You know. That's true. That's true. I mean, my whole my channel was her idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a great idea. We will do that. We in June we will make that happen. Yeah, I remember when I first started streaming. Uh, I think my wife thought that I was like trying to talk to cam girls or something. She was like, "Why are you talking to strangers on the internet?" Nice. And I was like, "No, really, I swear it's this nerdy thing. You can watch me if you want." Right. But she's she's been on my streams in the past. Like if you go to my YouTube, you can actually see my wife playing games. Um, right. I stand by this. I say this all the time, but I stand by this. Uh, the best video period on my YouTube channel is her playing the Slenderman game. Um, it's only got like, I think maybe 150 views now, and I'm probably 130 of them because nothing makes me laugh harder than that video. So That's awesome. Um, and then so the other question was... Uh, where was it? Oh, Elis uh, asked how you cheat in a tournament. And uh, in the instances uh, specifically referring to Kassadin and what occurred, um, he was routinely caught, I say routinely meaning like multiple times, um, where he would submit a deck list and then he would be playing cards that were not in his deck list. Yeah. Right? So like you submit a deck list, that's the deck you're supposed to play for the tournament, and then you know, you, you play something not in your deck. Um, now arguments can be made about whether or not, like, even if that's even beneficial. Um, I know one of the times it happened, somebody said like that card objectively makes his deck worse. Um, It was, it was journey to sovereign guard one time though, which made a huge impact on how his opponent was playing the entire Yeah, One time. I just mean one of the other times I know that was an argument made, like if he's trying to cheat, he's doing it poorly, blah, blah, blah. But the point is, is like it happened more than once like you know if it happens and also uh i don't want to go into too many details but like every time it did happen there was uh a a lack of humility like i would expect like like if it's me for example uh and i can only speak to my own uh i guess experience or uh desire right but like if I submit a deck list and maybe I submit it incorrectly as an accident and error, right? Let's, let's just say right. it's, it's not me trying to cheat. Um, right. it, if that ends up happening, right? If it comes up, then I apologize profusely. Uh, I forfeit the game, like before even anyone asks me, right? Like I'm just gonna say, like, hey man, like this is 100 percent on me. It clearly, like, I'll take the loss here, and then uh, I certainly like double and triple check my shit going forward to make sure it doesn't happen again. Right. Like that feels to me, like if you're, if it's an, if it's a true honest mistake, those are the things that should happen. Right. Like you apologize a bunch, you say like, Hey, you know what? Like I take the loss here. That's on me, my bad. And then you double and triple check your stuff. Um, none of those things were happening. So yeah. Yeah. His reaction to it was, like, super, super fucking toxic, too. So. Uh, the new Legend card back looks fucking amazing. I, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the combination of colors, and I'm excited to uh, get it. And, yeah, he did the Bone Colossus thing. He, he was playing. I'm when, when, Disguise was the big one, and that was the worst yeah. of the two, in my opinion. Yeah, when those bugs were active, he was playing both in the same deck. <laughs> Yeah, as he says, in one case, he was streaming during the tournament that he was making a change his deck. Yeah, like I said, I didn't want to get too, like, in the weeds uh, details, but let's just say that it's a, it's not like a, you know, oops, my bad. Like, it's a, 
It's a history. Hey, Aeolus, thanks to the miracle of the fact you can't go below the bottom of the serpent, you can get to legend with like a 1% win rate if you win enough, if you play enough games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Immortal King covered it there, yeah. Which of my new, new carbacks is my favorite? I like the dragon one quite a bit, but I think the legend one is just gorgeous. Yeah, I, I very much like the dragon one, but I uh, also think that the legend one... Um, yeah. It's just like you said, like use of colors, the stars. Um, I just, I really like it too. Yeah. Um, so I know Aelos has been playing my, my, the spell sword deck that I released last week. I will say this, like I, I was asked to do a write up for it for the meta report. <laughs> not because of it's, I mean, like it, it's not, here's the thing. <laughs> it, it has some unwinnable matchups. <laughs> it, it's, it can it can win against a lot of things and against some decks it's really favored but one of its unwinnable matchups is uh battle mage giant battle mage <laughs> that deck is really popular and um that's going to hold back your win rate also part of the reason i think my win rate was so successful in the early game and, and when i started playing it is people saw battle or saw spell sword and assumed uh, control and mulligan incorrectly. Yeah, that, my... that does help a lot. I've had a lot of success recently with uh, mid range tribunal, and I know CVH yeah. has had a lot of uh, success as well. Yeah, and that's just because um, one, there's a lot of really good tools there, right? I mean, you take mid range sorcerer, and then you jam yeah. in like hive defenders and cloud rest illusionists and things like that, and it's just gonna be still really good but on top yeah. of that it's really helpful when people mulligan for the control matchup yeah yeah i mean i think i definitely won some games in the back of that additionally like it's a it the variance is super high with it because the the curve is super greedy and if you have the ring like in my experience with the ring that dex win percentage goes way up <laughs> Because the curve is garbage. You know, and look, it's a lot of fun to play. <laughs> uh, but it's not, I don't know, it's also not really user friendly. Hey, call back to an earlier topic. I just retweeted Lazy Gamer. Did you really? Well, he gave out solid advice. Nice. He just was yeah, like en said encouraging everybody to make sure you join the melee, uh, even if you can't play the games. Because. If you win zero games, like if you're if you're busy at work or you're doing whatever, sign in, enter the event, and then just don't play. Even at zero wins, uh, yeah. you the thousand gold is the same as if you bought ten packs, but you also get the alternate art, right? Like it is a you only you only gain right with this event. There is no reason to not do it, in my opinion. Right. I totally agree. Um, what was all the drama on Reddit with the PM me? I don't really, I don't know if I want to get into that, to be honest with you. I mean, the short version to Eagles is it wasn't necessarily drama. Um, yeah. somebody was making some poor choices and it <laughs> resulted in them, uh, at least being temporarily banned. I don't know if it's going to be a perma ban or not. That's up to Reddit mods, but yeah, two months ban right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't know details. I just work here. Yeah. Mid sorcerer is great. I think that burn the skies list is really strong. It's a heavy per purple. Um. Sorcerer list. Let, and me, I have a video. let me ask you this: Does his list run Worm King Agent? No. Well, then it's it, wrong. It uh, the curve <laughs> stops at uh, Nahag Leave and Bone Colossus. It doesn't even run on Kano. Maybe it does. I can't remember. I don't think I ever played on Kano if it does. Yeah, well, let me just say, if it doesn't run Worm King's Agent, it's wrong. I stand by yeah. that. Look, I love uh, I love Worm King's Agent as much as the next guy, but I didn't have a lot of experience with the archetype, so I didn't want to try to build a deck. <clears throat> that said, I, I did, the, did exactly that with Midrange Warrior. But to be fair, <laughs> I've played a lot of, like, a lot of aggro orcs. Like, I used to play that deck a lot until Warrior got popular, and then I didn't want to play Aggro Warrior anymore. Um, in fact, Orcs might be the most aggressive deck I've ever played. 
until I did this. Aggro That's week. not true. I remember very vividly you making a prophecy battle mage video <laughs> 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 that didn't go over so well. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of the most disliked things I've ever done. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Worm King is I... not meh. P PDMD. I I live and die by that. It's so good. Yeah, Worm King's agent is strong. Um, Zombie Hunter nine by nineteen. Do I think that I might work fleeting apparition into my Telvanni altar list? I want to. I I'm getting closer and closer to jamming fleeting apparition into a deck. Uh, I th I think I said during my set review that this was a card that I would get to eventually. But then I needed to work my way through like the most obvious strategies and, and then start to get to more esoteric kinds of things. And um, Fleeting Apparitions on my list. Well, so this is one of those interesting things. PDMD says he's had people play Worm King Agent against him. And if it was a bone daddy, he would have lost. But to that, I say that means they probably misplayed earlier in the game. Like, if you're playing Sorcerer correctly and you're fighting for board, you're snowballing your position, Worm King is like sheer point dragon on steroids, right? Like, it can't be. Sor Sorcerer just doesn't have a lot of, like, really good tempo plays where you're shoving a body on the board while also removing a threat. And Worm King does that for you kind of twofold. And then yeah. one of the historically one of the problems with sorcerer is that if it falls behind it didn't have very good tools to stabilize and retake the game but yeah. with getting new tools like barrow stalker it helped out a lot and worm king is just another tool there like i can just say specifically the number of times that worm king has saved me versus the number of times that it's cost me has been significantly higher um bone colossus is great i don't fault people for running it but the the times uh, like I, I've nicknamed uh, Bone Colossus Hand Daddy lately because like the times that it has sat in my hand because it just either wasn't the right play or quite frankly I just didn't need it has been significantly higher than in the past. So, yeah. Good times. We've reached that part of the show now. You fading? <laughs> I am, dude. <laughs> I'm just. I'm I like. Just I like that. Good times is your unofficial like old man. I'm. I'm getting tired thing because that's what happens. Yeah. You. You fill your awkward yeah. silences with just good times, which is yeah. really like. I say groovy a lot. <laughs> In conclusion, uh, as far as the grand melee goes, in my heart I want to play uh, Control Monk because I think it'd be fun. In reality, I'll probably play Halalu or Support Mage, to be totally honest. Even though Support Mage has a pretty nightmarish matchup against Warrior, I think it's pretty good against most other things. Yeah, I mean, I will say this about Support Mage. It was really popular for a while, and then since House of the Morrowind came out, it has kind of waned in popularity. Yeah. And yeah. I don't I don't know if there's a better time to at least try to, to try to run it again. I say it just because I've noticed a lot of decks that used to run like Dushnik are now switching to Earthbone because that's what the meta has been more favorable yeah. to. Yeah. So I'm not saying that support removal doesn't exist. It's definitely still out there, but I've seen a lot less of it as of late. So it's interesting. Hey guys, if you're wondering about the seemingly abrupt stop just now, it's because that is where the podcast ended. My machine did the old blue screen of death. Yes, once again. So we had to call it there for the night. Um, sorry. Someday, some way, I'll get this old, old machine fixed, and we won't have to worry about that anymore. So thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out with us, and we will see you next week.